What's up guys, Jackie here and welcome to another edition of Extreme Sports Friday. Tonight is Friday night. Um, the sport for the night is, drum roll, softball. Um, tonight we're going to be more specifically going over the swinging aspect of softball. We're going over swinging, um, everything from your swing stance to um, your follow through and a few other pointers that you probably wouldn't think of. Um, guys, softball season is right around the corner and you wanna make sure that you're well prepared. Um, you wanna make sure that you look well prepared. That's almost equally as important as actually being prepared. Um, it's a whole appearance marketing factor. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna show you guys um, how to swing and how to hit a softball. Um, let's do this guys, Friday night sports. Here we go, got my bat. Um, just gotta find my ball, I hit it so far, far last time. All right, so what did I do just there? I got to the home plate. Um, I picked up my ball, picked up my bat, and then what did I do? Did I do the right thing? Wrong. I did the wrong thing. And what did I do wrong? I stood with my dominant hand facing outwards, um, meaning that I released the ball from behind the bat. That's mistake number one in softball, um, and a lot of people make it. That's how you can spot a rookie on the field. They actually hit the ball coming from behind them rather than having the ball be thrown to them. If you don't walk out onto the field prepared to demand that the other team tosses from in front of you, um, then you're kind of screwed um, and you'll be really embarrassed because people will probably talk about you um, on Facebook or even Instagram afterwards. So that's the first thing you want to make sure that you don't do. But what I did do correctly there was my batting stance. Um, you may have noticed that I had my legs, um, my knees kind of bent and my legs turn outward, sort of in a silhouette pose, like a ballerina. Um, that's what you want to do at the plate. Ballerinas are nimble. You want to be nimble in softball. Otherwise, um, you might tear a hamstring and you can't do that. Um, you can't run and you also can't be a catcher if you tear your hamstring. Um, so that means you would have to have someone walk the bases for you um, and you have to play like infield or something boring like that. Um, so those are the two things that I did right the one thing that I did right and the one thing that I did wrong. Um, total of two things. Um, now I'm going to show you how to actually hit the ball correctly. All right, so what did I do there? I got to the plate and um, first thing I did was I checked my balance. You wanna make sure that when you stand on the ground, you feel comfortable standing. You don't feel like you're gonna fall. Um, if you fall down while you're trying to swing, the ball will not go far at all. You'll be lucky if you get um, a lob or a bunt, as they call it. Um, the next thing that I did was I checked my wingspan reach. That's really, really crucial. You wanna take the bat hold it all the way outwards and see what's in your wingspan. Because if anything is in your wingspan, um, then one of two things is gonna happen. Either you're gonna hit that or that thing is gonna jump out at you right as you're about to make contact and it'll mess up your concentration. You can't have that in softball. So um, once I noticed something was in my wingspan, which was actually a glass cabinet, um, definitely not a good thing to have in your wingspan, I took a step forward thereby removing the object from my wingspan when I was able to swing. The next thing that I did before actually swinging was I hit the ball against the bat a bunch of times. The reason I did that was to um, check the pitches of the bat and the ball at different levels of the bat. Um, you want to find the part of the bat that makes the most high-pitched sound. That's where you want to hit from. It's kind of like the sweet spot of the bat. 
So it's usually um, right around here, like just a little bit above where your fingers are. So say if your fingers are right, right here, you want to be hitting the ball right here. So as close as possible to your hand, that's where you want the ball to hit. Um, the next thing that I did was um, I got into this stance that I talked about, um, the ballerina pose. And then I held the bat with my dominant hand and my dominant hand only. I sort of outstretched it all the way, brought it back like, um, like I'm about to do the sprinkler. Bring it all the way back like that and then you swing. The reason that's so important is because you need your non-dominant hand to be by your side for balance. Um, I mentioned why balance is important. I'm not going to repeat myself, but you need that non-dominant hand there for balance. And once you do that, um, you have somebody throw the softball to you. You bring your arm all the way back and then you go forward. Um, and you probably noticed that my ball went really far. I had really excellent control over it. And um, the trajectory was really like exactly where you want trajectory to be. Um, and it's all because I followed that simple method. So um, you guys, I really recommend that you play this video back. Um, take down notes if you haven't been. Um, you know, I'm going to put this up um, as video on demand so you can take it down from the cloud and um, you can watch it. Um, if you don't know how to find the cloud, um, let me know. I'll send you a link to the cloud. I'll tell you how to get there. Um, make sure you at least have dial up, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, but yeah, guys, um, softball season's upon us. And with this video tutorial, if you follow it, then you'll be ready for it. You'll be ready for softball. The only question will be, is softball ready for you? But you got to think about it. Um, tune in next week where um, I'll be throwing shot put and discus um, in the house.